G'day guys, I've had a question about the difference between the instantaneous rate of change and the average rate of changes of a function. I've chosen this question because it involves both to um, serve as a sort of a template for my explanation. So let's get to it. So we're asked to find the average rate of change between two points as well as the instantaneous rate of change at the two points of a particular function y equals x squared minus 3x. So we're given the point p which is 3, 0, so that's here. Call that point P. And we're given the point Q at 618. So that's here. Q. Now, the average rate of change of the function, you need to have two points. It has to be over a particular distance. So here we're going from the point where x equals 3 and the point where x equals 6 and we're asked to find the average rate of change of the function. Now the way you work that out is you want to work out what the gradient is of a line that connects the two points. So with the average rate of change what we're looking for is we're looking for the gradient of this red line here, the line that connects the point Q and the point P together. So when we're, whenever we're looking for the gradient of a linear function we're going to use, so let's write part A down, we're going to use the equation m is equal to y2 take y1 divided by x2 take x1. Cool, so this is basically rise over run. So in, in the case that we're looking at here, we've got y2 which is 18 take y1, which is 0, divided by x2, 6, take x1, which is 3. And this is going to be equal to 18, divided by 3, which is equal to 6. So, our gradient, or the average rate of change, of the line that connects the points P and Q, is 6. So, that is our solution to part A. For part B and part C, instantaneous rate of change, this is where we need to use the concept of a derivative. So, when we're, the, the key word here is instantaneous. So, when we hear the word instantaneous, the only tool that we have for measuring instantaneous rate of change is the derivative of the function. So, hopefully you guys are well aware of how a derivative works. What we're going to do is we differentiate this function here to get y prime and that gives us a 2x minus 3. So I'm not going to go through how I work that out. I've got many videos on how to calculate derivatives in the, on this channel and there are many videos on YouTube on how that works as well. So go have a look if you don't know how that worked. So what I'm also all, all I'm going to do for part B is I'm just going to work out or evaluate this derivative at the point where x is equal to 3. So I'm just going to go y prime at x equals 3. So I just go 2 times 3 minus 3 is equal to 6 take 3, which is 3. Not too complicated. Let's just separate those two out. Separate this one from c. Now for c, we do exactly the same thing. We already have the derivative. But in this case, we're going to substitute in x equals 6. So we have 2 times 6 minus 3, which is equal to 12 minus 3 is 9. Cool. So what you can see is when we take the instantaneous rate of change, we're basically looking at a tangent line. So what I've done here to explain uh, the instantaneous rate of change a little bit better, as so I've drawn the two tangent lines in. So basically for point P, which is this part here, the instantaneous rate of change is less than the average rate of change between the points P and Q. At the point Q, which is this one, the instantaneous rate of change is greater than the average rate of change. So you can see that the instantaneous rate of change 
is a lot more accurate at determining rates of change at particular points. The average rate of change is good if we want like what it, what it says, the average of all of the rates of change between the point P and the point Q. Some are going to be understated, like the point Q. Some are going to be overstated, like at the point P, but you'll get an average over that time. Instantaneous rate of change is using the derivative, and we get a tangent line to the functions at particular points. These two instantaneous rates of change are are only accurate at exactly on the point P and exactly at the point Q. So basically the buzzword here is instantaneous. We use the derivative. So we're finding dy dx. And if we see average rate of change, we find rise over run. We find a linear gradient. And that's basically it. Instantaneous, we take the derivative at a particular point. Average, we take the rise over run from point, in this case, P to point Q. So I hope this video helped, guys. If it did, throw it a like. Um, I put out new videos all the time. Um, yeah, subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. And if you have any problems or any questions you'd like solved, um, just send me a message or leave it in the description comments box below, and I'll do my best to solve any problems that you have. But until next time, guys, I'll see you soon.